experimental episode. I'll drop. It, it's it's going to happen, Dan. You think so? Yeah. Are you looking at your connection and it's squirrely? It's it's just inevitable. Okay. All right. I like that you're prepared for it, though. That makes me happy. <laughs> well, you know, I've come to terms with it, to be honest. It's 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 like uh, loading into trials and then going to trials report or destiny tracker to check the enemy team, and realizing what you're about to face, <laughs> and you, you just <laughs> you just sit back and accept it. Yeah. That's probably probably not healthy. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> Hold up, guys! What's Update going? my Twitter name. The, oh, wh- wh- to what? <laughs> Live on PD a... podcast, come on! Hey, oh, this man obviously knows how to handle Twitter. I I didn't even know that was possible. I I, yeah, I, I thought you had to go through a whole process for that, and that the one reason Dan can't change his name is because some strange girl miles and miles away refuses to let him do it. Well, yeah, <laughs> I thought that was how it was for everybody. I thought everybody had to fight a fifteen-year-old girl to change their name on Twitter. Look. <laughs> Dude, I'm I've not got prepared to do that. Into my name, and it's so annoying. That underscore is so freaking annoying. <laughs> there, it's, it's like a dead account that's uh, sitting there. I'm like, are yeah. you going to just not exist on Twitter so I can get rid of my underscore? It's like parked. <laughs> it's parked on your stuff. Yeah. So it's P I G I triple N underscore on it's, Twitter. At least yours is an <laughs> is an active. Mine is active and actively trying to thwart me getting. That account name. <laughs> really? what, what I, I have it? to believe. Go ahead. I, was, I, I have to believe now that the only reason that person is active on Twitter is just because you've messaged them saying, hey, can you like get off this username? <laughs> they were probably never going to come back to Twitter, but now like, no, nah, screw this guy. 100%. <laughs> exactly. 100% now. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, yeah. Um, now, and I got a little taste of my own medicine. Uh, a couple weeks ago when somebody messaged me out of the blue and was just like, Hey, can I buy your account through discord? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no. And the, like immediately blocked them and then complained about it on Twitter. And somebody's like, that's how that 15 year old girl felt when you offered to purchase. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And so I'm just, you know, bygones are bygones. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just rolling with the punches now. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate that. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode 251 of the Planet Destiny podcast. We are back once again to discuss the things going on in the Destiny universe. And this week, we have a very special guest who has a very special mask or hat that he showed us earlier, and I love it. It's not coming out. (laughs) It's not coming out. You'll never know what it is until he does something with it, but we know what it is, and that makes me oh so happy. Pigeon, thanks so much for joining us, man. Guys, thanks for having me. I'm buzzing. Dude, no, it's it's great to have you here, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about some of the things going on with uh, the Destiny universe right now. Additionally, we've got our usual roundtable of hosts, Dan Finity, back as always. You are our rock buddy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm the rock? You're the rock. Which means you got to shave it all off. All of it. Wait. It's all got to go. I did not agree to that. I did, didn't ask you to agree to it. <laughs> just got to do it. You, ag- you agreed when you uh, said who you were. We, you, when you acknowledged being the rock of this show. That's just, it just got to roll with the punches, man. So if I'm the rock of the show, mm-hmm. who is Nim and, and who are you? Uh, Nim is Discount Undertaker. <laughs> for my rest for my old school wrestling fans oh. out there y'all remember the you remember the oh. fake undertaker that's nim not oh. the real undertaker he's the fake wow. undertaker oh man <laughs> at least he didn't, didn't at least he didn't say paul bearer the, i didn't come oh. back to this podcast oh for 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 oh. this negativity this is what you signed up for this, this it's why you're man. here it's it's literally not. <laughs> I can actually get used to this because it's usually me that takes the shade, and luckily I know enough about wrestling, so you wouldn't have, it wouldn't have affected me either. <laughs> oh no, I'm the punching bag here. No, just because you're new doesn't mean you're a punching bag. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Yeah, right. Because as you said <laughs> earlier, you're new to the show, right? It's, yeah, you're the new it's guy. your first podcast. Yeah, you're the new guy. So you, you get the freshman experience. <laughs> I hate you both. Oh, I love you so much. Oh, we love you, buddy. <laughs> Nim plays, everybody. And hi, I'm the Black Link, and we're back to talk more nonsense in Destiny. But first things first, for our guest, Pigeon, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And for those out there who maybe aren't acquainted with you, who are you? What is it you do? Yeah, uh, I'm Pigeon. I am a Scottish Destiny streamer from Glasgow. Uh, I stream on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv forward slash pigeon, low-key plug. Uh, <laughs> mostly focused on entertainment and picking up the game. Um, and community as well, so having a community to play Destiny, linking people up with other people to play, and have more laughs, make more memories, that's, that's pretty much it. I dig it. I dig it. And um, by the way, thanks for showing me that Discord thing. I was I went looking into it after you showed me that how to incorporate Discord in like a specific Discord server into your OBS. I am all over yeah. that sort of thing. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Great spread that knowledge, man. Yeah, man, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, so generally, whenever we have a guest on the show, we like to take a little bit of time to talk to them about you know who it is and who they are, what they do, and. My favorite question generally to start out with is either how did you get started gaming or how did you get started with Destiny? So this time I'm going to leave it up to you. Which of those would you rather answer? How did you get into Destiny or how did you get into gaming? I could try and segue both together. Oh, my favorite type of answer. Take it away. I'm going to activate challenge mode. Uh, <laughs> so the, more, the, more, the more I tell this story, the harder it gets. Like, I go, no, I could cut that bit out or leave that, and I feel like it cheapens it. So, uh, as far as gaming, though, like, um, for those who were actually about earlier, I just had my dad up to stream in this hot seat, and we got to speaking about it then. And, like, the general consensus is, like, my dad's the, the man that got me into video games from an early age through, uh, it was a Mega Drive I had, a Sega Mega Drive. Oh my goodness! Yes. <laughs> that, yeah. So I was going to say, when before, okay, boomer and chat. Um, <laughs> I literally uh, started out on Mega Drive and then had game console after game console growing up. Um, old platformers, adventures, and then I got to play in RPGs like Final Fantasy when PlayStation came out. Obviously, I think that had been on platforms before, but I didn't discover it until Final Fantasy VII, which I think was my first proper RPG. Right. Uh, Played all those over the years, and then the higher I was, I was always a PlayStation player. So it got to, um, I got to play Call of Duty for the first time, and I absolutely loved that. Loved the being in a party chat with people for the first time. I loved like shooting stuff and running about and memeing with pals at the time, like kids I went to school with. And then some like Destiny <laughs> came out of my life, like total by chance. I ended up uh, going to the local game store. And I bought two pre owned games that day. I bought Bloodborne mm -hmm. and I bought Destiny 1, which was in its second year at the time, which I later understood the whole like content cycle. Mm -hmm. And um, I played Bloodborne first because Destiny hit me with a big 100 gig update. I was like, no way here. Am I playing <laughs> yeah. that tonight? So I was like, no, nah, pass. So Bloodborne loaded up pretty straightforwardly. It's obviously a single, on, like a single player game. And. Uh, well, that didn't last long. If you played a Bloodborne game or a Soulsborne <laughs> game, you'll know how your first experience of these, those go. <laughs> uh, so the next day, uh, Destiny was ready to go, but I had work. I was like, right, cool. Got home, loaded up Destiny. Destiny 1. So you can imagine Destiny 1 in year 2, taking Kings Dropped. And they stepped up their game at the time. They'd taken all the players from year 1. And here's me playing it for the first time. And uh, I'll never forget it. The moment I shot one of the enemies with the Kvostov that you picked up and saw the damage numbers, I was like, that's it. This is it. Yeah. It's a first person shooter. It's got an RPG element to it. My, he my head just, uh, that's it. And <laughs> it's a weird one, right? But I, always, I never went to Xbox. I always wanted to play Halo. I only ever got a shot at my pal's house to play Halo. So one of the things about that was the actual sort of. Um, controller vibration function it was very unique to halo it, it felt so real to me at right. least and this was the first game on playstation it felt just like that it reminded me of that straight away i was just like i am sold two thousand hours later three thousand hours later here we are <laughs> obsessed so yeah i hope that segues it good enough like there's loads of background stories but i don't want to like ramble on as i'd said before we go on the show no tonight. 
I, th- I think that was beautiful. So you start out with the Mega Drive, you go through some of those games, you really get into RPGs, and then you get into shooters, and then you come to Destiny, which is a blend of those two genres. I think you, you I don't know if anybody could have explained it better. Closing course, man. Did, did you did you finish Bloodborne? Uh, yes, eventually. I went okay. back to it. Uh, Good man. I, 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 okay, use that. Okay, but, but shh. Better man than me. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I love Bloodborne so much, dude. But yeah, so that that's that's fantastic. And so obviously the RPG elements mixed in with the shooter elements of Destiny is, is a thing that attracted you to the franchise. And that, I think, has been expanded on pretty well now with D2. They've uh, kind of broken into the, mo- the RPG mold a bit more. We just saw, of course, this week the Stasis class reveals where we're going to be introducing all kinds of other weird effects there. Uh, so certainly, certainly, I understand. I understand the love of RPGs and the love of first-person shooters and how well those can blend together in games like Destiny or Borderlands and stuff like that. So yes. what would you say has been your favorite Destiny experience then? Favorite Destiny experience? Mm-hmm. I, th- I Genuinely, it would have to be... So in that, that year, that time when I, was, I first picked up Destiny 1, I was lucky enough to have people on my, my friends list that, like... I played Destiny 2, I was like, right, cool. And then I met, I got introduced to my first clan in Destiny. And it was like uh, a, Thurs- a late Thursday night, and I'd been dying to do one of the raids. I'd, I'd, I actually went into Vault of Glass before I learned what Vault of Glass was. Stood on a plate on my own, I was just like, what do I do? I'm like, no idea what's going on here. And uh, I messaged people about it, like people on Facebook at the time. I was like, what do I do with that? And like, dude, you need six people for it. And I'm just like, okay. So I went about trying to get six people for it, but again, people were had grinded the hell out of it. They weren't really interested in doing a vault of glass again in year two. Right. But the clan, this is where the clan came in, and I, all the guys were like, oh, we need to get this dude for his first raid. And I was like, yeah, please, 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 please. So it was a late <laughs> Thursday night, one night, and we ended up doing vault of glass for the first time. And then, again, the way my brain works, like I just see patterns and sequences form together, cause and effect. And see, seeing that in a game, like doing the raids, right. again, this is from a zero MMO background, by the way, <laughs> uh, playing raid mechanics the first time and then getting through that raid. It was, I'm not even kidding, it was 7am in the morning by the time we got through, but it was the best night of my life. I was like, that was amazing. <laughs> I went to bed and I woke up in the afternoon, I was like, I'm doing that again. I, I, I'm all about yeah. this. this is, right. I think that was a, a, like a total pivotal point for me. Right on. Yeah, the, the, the raid experiences in Destiny are such a perfect blend of, of environmental puzzles and challenges with enemies that you have to solve. Uh, mix in with, you know, the general challenge of, of higher leveled enemies and, you know, shooting mechanics and all that kind of stuff. Do you have a favorite raid overall throughout Destiny or Destiny 2? Uh, it's, it's, this is always one of those big uh, make or break questions, but... Um, <laughs> Like, I played Destiny 1 organically. I didn't mm-hmm. buy any content until I needed to. And then, I, again, that's when I learned about the cycle. But we're right in the middle of year two. And I bought the, the Taken King. I haven't played vanilla Destiny for so long. And uh, building up through that content right in the middle of year two was amazing. And I got to the King's Fall for the first time. And that's when I really got in my stride. I understood that how raids started to work. I understood how the game systems worked. So I say King's Fall has that place in my heart for those reasons. Mm. And then Last Wish from Destiny 2 just brings it all back, brings it all flooding back in the current game. So those two, I'm going to say they two, for those reasons, in a, a kind of linked manner. Yeah, I dig that. Um, I would say Last Wish is, is probably the raid closest in feeling to, uh, to King's Fall for me yeah. they have uh, mm-hmm. the same sort of narrative drive and even the same sort of uh setup with a lot of the challenges between there and the mechanics especially the mechanic heavy boss fight so long as you're not you know cheesing the dra- <laughs> the giant dragon it's yeah. uh it, it brings up the same sorts of feelings for me as well so I, I i get you on that one man it's good stuff it's good stuff well, all right that's all the questions i had <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Like you're saying about cheesing the dragon, it's an uh, ongoing meme with me that I don't <laughs> like cheesing Riven. It's literally became a meme. So, and before anybody comes in and says, "Oh, let's cheese Riven, clip our nails," I'm like, "No, not in my watch. Not in my watch." I noticed <laughs> that in the chat. Yeah, I knew it was already said that. <laughs> so when I knew it, I, I, I was trying to keep up. I'm like, "Someone's going to say, oh, he's going to cheese Riven tonight, isn't he?'" <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that, that is a meme with me, so people all find that about me. If you want to learn Riven, legit, by the way, come at me. <laughs> Done it once, and I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Never again. I'm good. <laughs> I got my 1K. <laughs> Uh, I don't care how. No, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Path of, least, path of least resistance always wins, but for sheer fun of doing something, it's worth doing once. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree with that. That's why I did Spire of Stars exactly one time and never <laughs> yeah. again. No matter what Dan <laughs> says. That no matter what. Dan real, man. I remember. So TBL, I actually, I just did Spire of Stars, like uh, two weeks ago. What? And. For the for the triumph for the, oh, okay. the moments of triumph, yeah. Um, and I I was like, you know what? I'm fairly certain the only completion that I have of this was with like TBL and Gray Fox, like back when this thing launched. Mm -hmm. And so I went back into my my uh, my raid report, and <laughs> sure enough, I I only had like the one clear back when this launched with uh, I think it was Warmind. I was like, yep, I still hate it. I still <laughs> hate it. Never again. Oh my god. Nope. Uh, I just ran a bunch of them, to, or like a couple of them. Ah, three of them? Three of them today. The boss checkpoint for the last two. Just to get people the uh, moment of triumph stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah probably still my least favorite raid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. It's a lot of nonsense. And you know, it's funny because it's a raid layer. It's, it's less a raid and more a boss fight. Because it's yeah. the boss fight that everybody gets caught up on. And by the yeah. way, I don't even know if anybody can hear it. I apologize if there's some rumbles going on in my microphone right now. There's a rocket going up. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> there's, a, there's a spaceship going up right now, and so the entire house is shaking. It's the joys of living on the Space Coast. I'm a couple miles away from where they shoot those into outer space. Cool stuff. I'm calling Elon <laughs> Musk right now. Yeah. I'm going to text man. that, I'm gonna text that I... man. Stop it! Not now! <laughs> I'm <laughs> recording a <laughs> podcast. Best that guy here's some wee bam throwing a, a rock at the window. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of rocket. No intended, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Those those accidental puns run here. They they those are fine here. One hundred percent. Um so you got me thinking about Spire of Stars and how much I I don't want to ever do that raid again, but I need to <laughs> for my challenges this uh, this season. So, Pigeon, obviously we're ahead of a pretty interesting time here in Destiny 2. We've got this current season ongoing. It's been extended for about a month and a half. And then we've got Beyond Light, which for all intents and purposes is almost kind of like the closest thing we're going to get to a Destiny 3 for the next few years. How do you feel about this current season? And in particular, how do you feel about some of the changes we've seen coming in Beyond Light? We're going to bridge into that conversation, talking about stasis and all of that kind of stuff. But what are your thoughts on all that? Yeah, man. Um, I think it just depends what your, your personal goals are in Destiny. I know guys like Dan uh, do a lot of PV helps. This is like prime time for, to, to uh, check boxes and help people with stuff. People mm -hmm. are rush, like, rushing opportunity for raid helps, PV helps. So it is actually really self-orientated in that sense, if you're talking about season. And uh, the content mm, still feels a bit light. We had a good good start, good feel yeah. of the season. Everything you do contributes to get progressing the season, which is I think vital for the gameplay loop. Um sandbox, and eh, well obviously we can see there's a, a few <laughs> things in the a few things in the game that are <laughs> shining bright again. Mountain top. Uh -huh. 600 RPMs, but like apart from that, I'm having a good time. I've I've just been kind of holding my time in PvP. Like I've only been PC for about three four months. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, so I'm I'm looking oh, at like wow. just practice M and K every day, get better at what I do, the way I used to do in console, and uh, just goof around really. And uh, what else were we asking? So beyond like yeah, gameplay systems. Like if I was to do hot takes, I hope they change the leveling system. I think. Doing the whole yeah. RNG look grind to get one or two more powers is is getting really really tired now. Mm -hmm. The artifact stuff as well, bounty hoarding, not keen in that. Like people that bounty hoard, by the way, use I don't know how you do it because I can't force myself <laughs> to do that, especially because like yep. three different characters. It's just brutal. Um, 
But yeah, I'm looking forward to Beyond Light. Like, I've already put my time in for work. Hopefully, hopefully I get it off. Uh, looking forward to just getting right into it. Heck yeah. Yeah, right on. Um, <laughs> the, the, in particular, talking about changing up the, the leveling system has been a big topic or topic of conversation throughout the community this last week. I think I saw Fallout talking a bit about it as well yeah. as uh, some other people. How would you like to see the leveling system change? <clears throat> See, there's so many different like people have so many different ideas. Like mm-hmm. I love the I love like a core RPG style grind where your character is what you are rather than what's equipped to them. Your right. stats and all that are bound to that. If you grind that character doing activities, they should see returns on their stats up to like certain limits, obviously, or balancing. Like you've played if you've played certain RPGs before, you get like point allocations that you can stick yeah. on your character. Here you, you get ten discipline because you you're amazing with grenades or something that sort of thing. Um, armor grind again. Just I mean, I recently got in Minecraft. I don't know if anyone plays Minecraft. I love how everything's tiered in that based on how much you go farm materials and stuff. Mm-hmm. It could be like a forging system for armor instead of a random drop system. There could there could be loads of different things, and that's just my idea on it. That's and I'm not even saying that's a pipe dream. Like it could be a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. You know, uh, that almost kind of focuses it, uh, focuses things more towards the RPG aspect of uh, of Destiny. You know, the the, the entire stat grind there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned wanting to get rid of RNG when it comes yeah. to a lot of the leveling. I can one hundred percent agree with that. It, oh, yeah, it sucks. Good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There's, yeah. There's nothing worse than you're you're trying to get that last piece, and mm-hmm. you, you've got a set amount of pinnacle things you can do per week, and then you don't get it that week, and you're like, well, that's me till next week, and that yeah. can get really frustrating. I think I've seen it happen a lot of people uh, chasing that pinnacle. Not to mention that, like my mindset, it's a wee bit lazier. Like I, I get halfway through a season, I go, I'll play what I want. I'll see how powerful I get. I'm. It's going. They're going to move the goalposts again next season anyway, and I'm going to fly past whatever level i was about to reach yep mm-hmm. so it kind of cheapens that as well and same that's where the artifact thing comes in as well like you can just get a, a head start with an artifact and her like her mm-hmm. mars activities i think the big thing with the artifact because i'm i'm i don't know if this is a hot take or not but i'm the i i, I kind of want the power level gone from the artifact just be, yeah it, it, yeah, it becomes exactly. useless it becomes useless like pretty pretty quickly um we we have again this a lot of this is going to change with beyond light because you know mm-hmm. we have activities rotating out and all and whatnot but there are so many powerful sources in the game that even without the artifact you can you can get to like whatever level is recommended for things like the dungeons and like the raids and stuff like that and it doesn't matter like the power the the um, artifact power isn't counted in like contest if i'm not mistaken it doesn't count yeah, it's not. in contest and then it doesn't count in iron banner and it doesn't count in trials like there's there's no point for that power level especially when like when you think about it there's almost no pow- no point to power level in general because if, at some point you you get delta out yeah yeah you know, like you can be level 1090 and go into Whisper of the Worm where enemies are capped at like 750 and get two shotted by a fucking scion. It doesn't yeah. make a difference. It doesn't matter. And like I and right now, the, the power level and the artifact is just causing more problems than anything, especially with with like Iron Banner. Well, there's people in there that like they have oh my the power God. level glitch yeah. enabled in their actual yep. lords that you can't do anything against. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just kind of like I'm I'm kind of over the whole artifact power power level thing. Like I think it's the artifact is neat for mods. Just make it make make the experience pool larger so you can work throughout the season to unlock those mods not in like the first week by just doing an ass ton of like daily bounties and lost sectors and yeah 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 Yeah. it's it's so odd because the 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 only place where you would get a benefit from that they disabled it in 
you'd get a benefit from it in trials and you'd get a benefit from it in iron banner nowhere else in the game would you generally get a benefit from being over leveled in terms of light and they disabled it that leads me to the point the the the, the realization that then what's what's the point of it and the point of that extra light is just for people to grind it's it's literally just put in there to give artificial people, grind it's an yeah. artificial grind yeah. giving people something to chase it's not a benefit at all it's just there for them to chase and when you have something like that where it's it's a grind that you put into the game that doesn't result in anything and the only thing that it could have res- you know could have provided benefit for you've disabled it in that's not a worthwhile addition in my opinion that means it should probably be rethought and hopefully with beyond light it will be absolutely Kind of sounds like the solstice armor sets as well. You're just doing stuff for the sake of doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yep. The sets are cool in that. It's like what sets them apart from someone else. That's the the thing. That's the yeah. that's like the personal drive to do it. You know. Yeah, but I think they, with the changes that they made for this year's solstice gear, they made it more relevant than the past couple of sets because. Oh yeah. The the you know you're you technically can use these sets up until next year. Yeah solstice event so and it's like they're dropping i mean it's a low drop rate but they they drop with like a lot of stats like a, a high stat roll so those are pretty right. worth if you're if you're looking for specific builds and stuff like that i personally haven't touched the eaz since yeah. i finished all of my characters just because <laughs> no. the, the drop rate is like too low for me to really like do i want to spend five minutes <laughs> just kind of like hopping yeah. from building to building i don't <laughs> No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. So I was like, all right. And like, I I got decent, like, I got a really decent, like, stat set from the, the Magnificent set already on my Warlock. And that's my main character. Like, right. I, I'm rocking, like, a 90 intellect, 80 recovery, like, Ooh. stat roll, <laughs> which is not bad. So I was like, all right, I guess I'm done with the <laughs> EAZ, dude. Yeah. yeah. See, you just made me, by the way, like, the... As good as getting armor sets is, there's definitely something not right when you're sitting with 10 packages and 5,000 keys as well. Like, yeah. And like 10 million blues that come out of the fucking <laughs> Oh, that as well. Oh, yeah. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Blood boils. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was done with it. I I haven't touched it since I, I got that third character done. I was like, third yeah. character's done. Bye. I'll never Over see you again. Years. Now I'll probably no actually go in. I might actually go back in. Guys, I might have a problem. I might <laughs> not have enhancement cores. Oh, I know me neither, but I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I don't care. <laughs> I'll just like, work for him. I'm like, I think I'm literally down to like me- less than 10. And I was like, <laughs> what did you spend? There's, on there's no point for me to, to like to get these right now because most of this arm, most of my armor set is going to be uh, sunset. I, yeah, no, I'm at 20, but. <laughs> Most of my armor is going to be sunset. So I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just get it. It'll give me a reason to play Beyond yeah. Light later on. Right. Um. So to answer your question, Pigeon. So I am gearing up to do a solo flawless prophecy, and so right. I'm, I'm pushing all of my gear. I pushed all my gear on my hunter and my titan so far, to, to the point where like I think I have a masterwork set on each. That. I, I'm going to attempt with, um, and I was I'm working on getting my warlock uh, set the same way, and uh, yeah, just ran out. That's it, just ran out. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Sorry, it's embarrassing. No, I understand. It's embarrassing, but <laughs> it's uh, it's how I'm living right now. Yeah, that's the life. That's the life. I know. I'm. T- I'm I'm with you guys. Finish the armor, which thankfully, super happy that those multipliers are in place for for secondary and third characters when it comes to mm-hmm. the Solstice gear. It made getting through those follow up characters so easy. I was done with my hunter in less than a day. I was done with my Titan in like two and a half hours. Fantastic, and then never looked back at the EAZ. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie to y'all. After I finished my Titan earlier this week, I legitimately forgot the EAZ was an activity available in the game. <laughs> I haven't th- I haven't thought about it until we brought it up here. And you know, I liked it. I like the world space. I don't think we need to see this activity again in, yeah. in D2. They can do something different. 
yeah, they can good. definitely put that that space to like f- better use. A hundred percent. It's one of the few spaces with like indoor and loads of verticality, so mm-hmm. it's it's a really cool area. You don't get that often in the game, like going inside buildings and stuff. Right. But no, I, the amount of times I've tried to navigate through one of the buildings to the bottom, and it turns out I hit a dead end. That's a wee bit. Yeah. I, and you see, when when they make a map like the EAZ, it just makes me sit back and think, you guys could bring back, uh, what was it? The, what was the ground war game mode in D one with the vehicle combat and all that kind of, that stuff? Combined arms. Yeah. Combined yeah, arms. You could, you could bring back larger scale PvP. And have maybe I agree. 12, 12 There's sort of the thing. sandbox is like prime for that right now. Right. I think it was mm-hmm. less so in Destiny one. Yeah, more so now because you have like all of these roaming abilities in the game with more to come. Um, yeah, in in Beyond Light, and um, it, it I feel like it's not being taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah, they could definitely do more with that, and you know, with uh, with all these new stasis powers coming into play, where you can build platforms and walls and all that kind of nonsense. Mm-hmm. I mean, hey. Take use, make use of that that those bigger environments that we can play around in. That's something I'd love to see coming soon. Absolutely, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. So, speaking of stasis, why don't we move, go ahead and move on to that topic of uh, of conversation there? Because of course, this week we had a trailer drop giving us a bit more of an in depth look at the stasis subclasses we'll be playing in for our titans, our hunters, and our warlocks when Beyond Light goes live later this year. I'm assuming everybody here had a chance to watch it and, and watch some of the B roll footage that came out of it, right? Yeah, man. I sat for so, an hour and forty five minutes. Waiting for this to show up. Who was victimized by the extra long wait for the, the bungee? <laughs> I thought I was going to miss it. I, I turned up 10 minutes before it uh, dropped. I was buzzing. Yeah. You were lucky. Like, what, two hours, 45 minutes into the, the Gamescom stream? It was an hour and 45. I remember Ugh. because Ugh. it started at 2 and my stream starts at, at 4. And I started uh-huh. watching it and I was like, oh. I'll comment on all the games up till it, uh, up till the oh, thing, no. right? <laughs> and like, and you know, Jeff Keeley said that it would be on it too. So you know, he's never steered me wrong before. Uh, that oh, statement, no. that statement is no longer true. Uh, <laughs> statement so, was never true. <laughs> yeah. So I started, I started watching it and commenting on all the games and everything. I was like, huh? So Destiny's going to show up later, isn't it? It is, isn't it? And then, yeah, it, it did. It like 15 minutes before stream, I was like, well, it's probably going to come on after I go live. So I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'll, I'll watch whatever. And then it goes live. And then it's posted immediately by Bungie on their Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I watched an hour, hour and 45 minutes of it. They got my impressions for that time. So rest yeah. in peace. Yeah. I'll uh, get used to nerd. Still for something, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I got to see some cool games. There's some cool games coming out. It actually made me in I don't know if interested is the right word. It made me uh uh intrigued by Outriders. Outriders actually looks Yeah. like a game. I'm so like What is it? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm I'm right there with you. I have no idea what it is, but they definitely showed me that it is a game. Yeah. So it's something that you you can't shoot in it. Yeah. And it uh yeah, it looks interesting, but I don't know. I don't know what it's about. Oh yeah, Anubis brings up in chat the Walking Dead Bridge Builder crossover, which had the lead actor from Napoleon Dynamite in the ad, which just kind of Oof. threw everything sideways for me. <laughs> Sounds like Sonic up here, uh, one of the Where Are They Now shows. Oh, yeah. I was like, wait. I was like, Napoleon Dynamite? What is, what's he doing here? <laughs> Selling you a video game, bro. Clearly. A walking Dead video game. And getting eaten by zombies. <laughs> Pinnacle of his career, obviously. Um, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> TBL, you didn't have to do him that way. <laughs> and he gets Hollywood money. He's fine. It's probably <laughs> fine. Kind of. But anyway, <laughs> it's kind of fine. It's it's forty eight percent fine. That's, oh, that's man, good God, enough. Dude. <laughs> this man had no chill. Stasis. You know what'll cool things down? Stasis. Stasis. What's yeah. your favorite what's yeah. your favorite thing about it, Pigeon? <laughs> what are your thoughts I, on Stasis? I'm gonna be really up myself here and say as a, a prospective sound designer, I freaking love the sound effects that they've made for oh, it. It's yeah. been so impactful and meaningful. They suit what they, they marry the visuals so brilliantly. I don't know if you guys saw the press kit. Mm-hmm. It was just, it was just clear clips, yeah. no music, no nothing, just sheer game sound effects, and it sounds so cool. It's like a really cool sort of glassy cracking noise followed by the explosions. I think they've absolutely nailed that, and that's one of my favorite things when they do DLCs because there's always going to be new things that have new unique sounds, and that's well with abilities and guns and stuff. So that's right. one thing I'm looking forward to, like hearing it how it all blends in with the actual what you're doing in the game. Yeah, Bungie yeah. sound design is always on point, and it was. You're right. I'm sitting here thinking about the the clips we got. It's no music. You can just hear some of the gameplay sounds and like, uh, the 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 sound of the hunter. I think the new hunter super is called Silence and Squall, and him casting yeah. that, throwing the picks, and then everything just hitting that ice up yeah. sound. It's cool. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's so cool, man. The like I said, the visuals just match up nicely. What they they showed us. Um so if it if it all goes well with that then yeah, what's actually happened with the subclasses and stuff, I'm pure buzzing to see how they play out neutral game and supers and then obviously the sandbox in general with them inside it. Right. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how exactly all that's going to play. Of course, a lot of people have been talking about how exactly the new stasis abilities of building walls and blocking people off and freezing people is going to be working when mm-hmm. uh, when Beyond Light comes out. I'm I'm just looking forward to seeing how it's going to change up the sandbox. Um, yeah, no way it's going to change it entirely. <laughs> got some thoughts on that, Nim? <laughs> I mean, just from from like you can you can build platforms with with this yep like that alone is gonna just i can't imagine the the spots that people are gonna find in like crucible maps mm. to like break out of the map and just be shitty <laughs> you know <laughs> um no dude i'm i'm so i was on the fence about stasis right um when when it first came out i'm like Okay, but that's ice, right? Like that was that was my whole thing. I was like, that doesn't that doesn't really resound or look like darkness powers to me. I was like, yeah, it was it was just weird. But you know, uh, I had a few people like even Griffin, so one of the the social guys from Bungie, uh, had like commented on one of my posts, and he was like, well, solar, arc, and void, what? What did those have to do with the light? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you raise a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Checkmate. Yeah, I was like, you got me there, bud. So once I kind of broke out of that mentality, um, and don't get me wrong, like outside of outside of this, like any other RPG like game that I play, and if like a sorcerer ability is is there, I'm always you I'm always gonna have like ice abilities or ice powers like i'm into like crystals and stuff like that so this shit Mm -hmm. is like right up my alley um (laughs) like even in darks like in dark souls 3 my 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 build is an intellect build with nothing but crystal sage powers Mm -hmm. for those that play dark souls you'll know what that is but um when i saw this you know in action a little bit more and like how pigeon was saying like the sound effects of it like it just all meshes so fucking well and mm-hmm. the visuals themselves, there's a, like one of the, I think it was during one of the charity streams where they showed off a um, concept art for stasis and stuff like that. And they have like this pattern on there. Um, and you can see, you can see that same pattern at like the base of the crystals that the Titan makes. And we'll get to the names here in a sec, but 
it it just blends in and meshes so good. I'm I'm yeah. excited for for the ability now, honestly. No, absolutely. I I I pretty much feel the same. I um I'm excited for something new. I think that's definitely a big part of of the excitement that I feel. It's nice to get away from the the solar arc and void setup we've had basically since uh since Destiny launched. So I'm looking forward to playing something new and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how Bungie is going to be building their world spaces and puzzles around your access to these new mm -hmm. abilities. As you know, yeah. you know that that's coming with raids and dungeons and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that way, actually. Imagine the, the new raid had a jumping section. You had to mm -hmm. use ice walls to build a platform up or something. To mm -hmm. get to oh, don't thing. count it out. I'm sure, oh, exactly. count it out. I'm sure it'll be a thing. Like, like, <laughs> right? that's, that's something I didn't even think, like, potential-wise. That's fun. Yeah, I definitely get the feeling that's coming. That's coming down the pipeline. So what were the name of the, the three classes, or subclasses, rather? Um, so we have, okay. for the Warlock, it's the Shadebinder. Right. The Hunters are called Revenants. And Titans oh, yeah. have the most badass name. They're the Behemoths. <laughs> Hell yeah. The Titan Behemoths. And uh, from the footage we got to see, it certainly certainly looks that way as they're barreling through things i saw a lot of people a lot of people were comparing it to striker um because the super is mm -hmm. fairly similar but i i mm -hmm. like it i like that they have like this massive slam that can send out aoe's and freeze large groups of enemies it looks beastly man the fact that in tbl i know you'll you'll relate to this the fact that it like the supers kind of interact with one another you know like you can uh suspend or encase is what they're calling it mm -hmm. with an ability and then you can have another person that's using stasis come in with like and just shatter them yeah that's like anthem that's like some anthem anthem shit with like the combos, the combos. Oh, yeah, yeah 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 it's a lot yeah it's a lot of room for exper experimentation and like brings that team element in, like slam mm -hmm. dunk style, like laying it up, laying up your shot and going for it. Yeah. So you're you're Scotty Pippen to someone else's Michael Jordan. Is that what pretty I'm much. hearing? Yeah. Pretty, it's, that's pretty <laughs> much on, on flight, man. Into hey, it. Man, three rings or three rings. <laughs> <laughs> I said someone someone's gonna overdub that's gonna be the first meme. Someone's gonna overdub a basketball game with the oh, and he comes in with the <laughs> <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> we dig oh NBA Jam. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it, Dan. That's my that's my dog. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to uh I'm looking forward to a lot of that. And um we got to we got to see at least two of the supers. We talked a bit about Silence and Squall, which uh is kind of an icy version of Blade Barrage. The uh, Hunter Revenant gets kind of like these pickaxes, you throw them, and they detonate and freeze everything in a localized area. That looks pretty cool. Um, what was the name of the Titan Super? Behemoth. Glacial Quake. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. Glacial Quake. And, like, you get some kind of buff called Crystalline Plating, I want to say, which I'm just assuming is going to be basic damage reduction. And we know yeah. for Warlocks, you get to summon the Ice Staff of Doom and, you know, start shooting things at people. I don't know if we got the name of that super, though. I assume we'll be no. doing that in a few days. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I noticed, too, is that um, in, in that B-roll, the Orbs of Light were renamed to Orbs of Power. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes um which there was there were some people on twitter you know saying like are we gonna have orbs of orbs of power that you know specifically charge stasis and orbs of light will only you know be able to to be picked up with with light subclasses um but i i think they're just gonna rename it all together yeah. That's it. Seems Agreed. like a rebrand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Light level. I mean, you're no power longer... level. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not tied to. You're not tied to just light anymore. So there's no reason for them to be orbs of light. So. Yeah, great. and it's, it's you're absolutely right. They did it with uh, light level in D1 becoming power level here in D2, and uh, 
if you don't know what Nim's talking about, in some of the footage that we got this week, as uh, players were getting kills with their super, they weren't generating orbs of light. The text was gen- you generated, you know, one or two orbs of power. So I, I mm. would say it's it's fairly likely that when Beyond Light drops, because we're moving beyond this system focused on the light, they're just renaming that to orbs of power. So every super, <laughs> everything will just yeah. be dropping orbs of power moving forward. That makes See, sense. It- that that could be it, or it could be a different sort of trade off for the stasis subclass in sandbox. It could be you can only get uh, you can only charge that super with orbs of power, which you can mm-hmm. only generate mm-hmm. with certain things, and it might charge faster or slower depending on how potent it is as well. Uh, that's just speculation. That's a hot take, by the way. Like it could be like one orb of power is like half the the sort of boost that a uh, orb of light would give you, say, but you get a bigger like return on it. For talking sake, mm-hmm. but yeah, that that's that could also be true though, man. Like that's how they're naming the whole system for orbs and stuff. Again, that's just speculation. Yeah, right. Really <sighs> could be up in the air for what they're going to be uh, for what they're going to be doing moving forward. Yeah. Um. Outside of that, what else do we have this week? Um. We had the Aztec cross video. That went live. That <laughs> made everybody upset on Twitter. Uh, apparently <laughs> so. Man, y'all get off my boy Asda Cross. He's a good dude. He can't do nothing wrong. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that entire thing has went whoosh for me. Like For real. I had no idea what everybody was so mad about, and I have less of an idea now that I've read up on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like at first it was like thought that he broke NDA, but he didn't break in. I don't. I don't know. I I think just mentioning NDA made everybody go. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? No. And because I think oh. what he mentioned in the video is that is the reasoning why yeah. they were taking out those planets, which in in that blog post they didn't really specify right you know what they were doing in the background but apparently at that summit they did and that's what asa cross put out there right with the so I, he I, wasn't sure if, if they if that was breaking nda yeah the the idea being that they would be sif, sifting out activities and and world spaces in order to rebuild them and then put them back into the game at a later date right yeah to re to recode them because apparently yeah. they were like hard to like build for instant and, and stuff like that so still yeah. which i think is something bungie or luke smith had talked about isn't it he yeah. mentioned something something similar because they the, the notion of stuff going into the content vault was never that it was going away forever they mm-hmm. mentioned that they were going to be taking things away working on it retooling it and then eventually cycling stuff back into the game i think I... wasn't there an implication in the video that it was it was possibly for like a new engine engine for, yes. yeah yeah so that they'd just be updating it for the next generation I'm not Which, sure. that... well again that's i'm going on what you guys have just said but it just sounds like he's made like a educated kind of take on everything rather than knowing something that he's, he's, that he's not allowed to share by the, mm-hmm. by the sounds of it like and yeah, it sounds like that was something Luke Smith spoke about, like taking stuff out of the game to rework it because building Destiny with the live uh, version is different from what's pulled offline and whatnot. So, mm-hmm. in that, but I, I totally missed the whole thing. So, educated guy though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, either way, it's um, either way, it, I I think that it's a fair theory for what might be going on with the Destiny content vault. And I see some people in chat have uh, brought up the TWAB and set in in questions. So I'm going through it right now. But yeah, they they mention in here that a lot of the stuff that's going into the vault is going to be getting reworked and retooled to better run with the game in the future. Whether that means uh, they're reworking for a new engine, I actually think that probably makes a bit of sense considering we know that destiny 2's content is going to be going at least until 2022 and right. we've got ps5 we've got xbox series x coming out and now that we know that there's no definitive de facto destiny 3 dropping i would absolutely understand if if bungie is um 
retooling things for a new improved engine they've talked a bit about how uh how the destiny engine certainly with destiny one and part of destiny two it's very hard to create and maintain content for it wasn't uh it, it's it's not the easiest thing to use and with i i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised at all if with um one of the bigger releases like the witch queen next year or lightfall in 2022 i with that release that they just push out an entirely new engine or whatever engine updates they're working on. That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Yeah. I mean, how was the Destiny engine? Like, 10 years? Oh, 12 years? Yeah. It's supposed to be the original ten... point was 10 years, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's all, <laughs> that's all the F. <laughs> A lot of that. But they, again, granted, that was under Activision. And yeah. uh, now that this is Bungie's own thing, it certainly looks like they're they're looking to stay focused on on destiny as a major franchise for a while i mean shoot they took this game and they just added another almost three years of content to it extending up to 2022 when we all thought destiny 2 was done this year i mean shoot even here on this show we've had multiple conversations where we talked about yeah we're they're probably going to be moving away from d2 sometime Mm -hmm, this year so uh it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be going on there certainly and i think uh across this video I think it's a good explanation for it. Fairly likely that he might be right. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they innovate with the content they, they take out, you know, because that's mm-hmm. valuable assets for Bungie. Yeah. Even more so now that they are the sole owners of the game and their product. Um, like I can see how... Oh, they've, like they've made amazing explanations. I always remember this... Uh, Either a Reddit post or a Reddit answer, and it was talking about how bugs get squashed and the whole process behind it. Mm-hmm. Right. And being able to manage the game so much easier is going to be vital for them to actually innovate, spend more time innovating. But like they were able to in Destiny 1, which was all getting built on and getting built on, whereas now yeah. we've got such a big bloated game that it needs to tear parts out. So, yeah. Yeah, this. This game is huge right now, dude. It's a massive game. <laughs> this is, it's this almost is ugly. I mean, more of a... mm-hmm. Dude, yeah, this is a thick, thick game right now. <laughs> it's what? It's uh, like the fourth biggest game on the market. Right? A game. Yeah. It's it's what? Uh, almost, uh, approaching 200 gigabytes? Wild. Hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a terabyte, yeah, it's yeah. Thick. It's a Rip, Destiny uh, 2 is those, uh, 500 gigabyte PS4s out there. Rest oh, in yeah. peace. Yeah, 500. So, I'm looking forward to seeing how they're going to be optimizing content, especially since with the DCV, they're not just taking stuff away. I mean, when Beyond Light comes out, we're getting the Cosmodrome back. We're getting all of the strikes that were tied to that. Granted, not all at once. I think we're only getting uh, Will of Crota with Beyond Light and then stuff like Sepix Prime and whatever that awful strike with the eyeball ogre uh, was a year or so later. Please, dear they Lord. They make didn't make any mention of that, though. They only mentioned um, that Will of Crota is launching with Beyond Light. But then right. they only mentioned that Sepix and the Fallen Saber uh, are the ones that are coming out afterwards. Good. Yeah. Do you think we just... can will them to forget about that strike? <laughs> it makes me wonder if the Plague Lens are even going to make an appearance. I don't think they need to, to be perfectly honest. We could yeah. probably yeah. keep the Plague Lens away. I don't, I don't think it needs to. I don't think it, it needs to come back. It wouldn't surprise me if they did come back. I don't know what purpose <laughs> they'd serve. Yeah. But they're a space that people like in some regards. Right. Yeah. But my point there being, it, it's not just them taking away content. Of course, we're going to be getting Europa with beyond light, but we're also getting a bunch of D one content, uh, filtered out as we move forward with this, with, uh, with, with these content release schedules next year, we're going to be getting vaults of glass back in destiny Two, Uh, and then moving on from there, we're probably going to be getting even more D one content. And so how they're going to be managing returning all of this content, which I can't wait to see some of this D1 stuff in the current D2 engine. I'm happy yeah. that we're going to be working on a new one, but I need some of that D1 content with my ledge grabbing shenanigans. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, TBL. Yes, sir. TBL, you, you are 
when we do Vault of Glass, mm -hmm. you, sir, are not allowed to use Sleeper Simulant on the Aurora. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? I'll, I'll agree to that stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> when, never again. When we run, can I also never touch a relic, please? <laughs> Nim knows exactly what's going on with that. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Yeats off the. Map. I can agree to these terms. <laughs> I, I I can agree to these terms. One hundred percent. Thank you, Nim. <laughs> Nim, my my guardian legal representation. <laughs> my client uh, is not going to be touching any sleeper simulants around any oracles. <laughs> We will be taking no oh, comments man. at this time. <laughs> Hold up. Was, was oh. there an a, a incident involving Sleeper? Um, yeah. So <clears throat> back <clears throat> back when uh, <clears throat> we used to do like Raid Tuesdays or Raid Thursdays uh, here on Planet Destiny when TBL used to stream on here, almost every time that the, or the Oracle parts came in, this man just refused to not use the sleeper simulant on an oracle <laughs> and like almost every other run he would end up like killing himself with the refraction of the uh, of the sleeper on the oracle i have been one shot domed by my own sleeper shot from shooting an oracle more than once and that's uh, all mm -hmm. that needs to be said about the scenario. <laughs> yeah, and some of those runs, you can't rest people because, like, it was hard mode. Dude, you need to do that for all time's sake. Bloop. Guardian down. <laughs> TBL. <laughs> Did you use Sleeper? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> yeah. But I'm looking forward to it, you know? I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing... How Bungie is going to be handling taking away some of this lesser played content, what they're going to be doing with that content, and how exactly they're going to be retooling the stuff that's going to be coming back to us. It's This is kind of an unprecedented sort of field of water. We've never gone through something like this, certainly in Destiny. Uh, the, only, the only other game franchise I can think of where the developers did something like this is Final Fantasy XIV, where they took the original game, said, okay, people hate this. They took away a bunch of content, retooled it, brought it back as a different game. And that's we're getting kind of a mini version of that here with the DCV. And I'm very excited to see how exactly they're uh, they're going to be moving forward with it. It's going to be interesting yeah. stuff. I heard about yeah. the, the Final Fantasy content cycle, like how they brought it back to life by doing the big wipe. So, um and how that game's just flourished ever since. Like, I've actually seen yeah. a lot of Destiny community members giving it a shot and absolutely loving it. So, yeah, if, that, if, if it works for something, like, definitely take a, a leaf out of, like, Squaresoft's uh, Square Enix, um, like, book for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing there. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well, all right. Was there any other news we had to talk about this week? I think from that, Destiny, no. <laughs> yeah, I think that was pretty much it. Uh, the only other thing that comes to mind is they, they did give an early patch note preview in right, the yeah. TWAB this week, um, which you can find there in the link in chat. Uh, they talk about the ornament glows uh, that shortly after Solstice went live, they became aware of a difference between how the Universal <laughs> Armor Glow bundle icon was depicted and how it visually performed in the game. After investigating the issue, they felt the difference between them was too vast, and they're going to be to retooling those to make them closer to what that uh, appears to in the preview. Um, I mean, it's, it's literally recall... night and day. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, I, I recall a certain Nim making a complaint about that a, a week or two before they made this or announced this change. Yeah. <laughs> Do they think? Do you think they listen? They're they listen? listening. TM. TM. <laughs> um, what else here? They talk about the sleeper nodes. So uh, they talk about uh, due to the way that sleeper nodes were created, they were unable to completely remove the possibility of receiving duplicate override frequencies. But they're making some improvements to greatly reduce the odds of receiving a duplicate. Uh, some of the tips are when combining resonant stems, it is very unlikely that the resulting override frequency will unlock a node in your current area. Uh, so you'll need to go leave that area if 
you want to make a, a node for it. Does that make sense? That makes yes. sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. They also, yeah, they, there's just various bug fixes and everything else in there. Um, for the most part, but yeah, outside of stasis, outside of that, it's fairly light this week. Happy about that, that sleeper node change. Cause there's a lot of people out there who, um, maybe, you know, weren't that active on the game when war mind was the, the primary bit of content. And it takes a lot a lot of of willpower to go back to mars and hunt down what are there 40 45 of the the sleeper nodes there's a few <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that so i'm glad and you know especially with the rng nature of it before if you stopped if you weren't unless you had just sat yourself down and dedicated three and a half hours to getting all of them one by one by one that internal checklist would get reset and like if the the fewer nodes you had left, the lower your chance of getting the actual nodes you needed. So I'm very happy to see that they're going to be addressing that. Uh, God, I'm so glad I really don't get hit by FOMO <laughs> too too often because then that <laughs> is what suck. Yeah, I, I wish I could. Fit or so. I'm yeah. heavy. No, no, like see and games. See any activity that involves you to go to a place to pick up thing. To take yeah. a thing. Not a fan. Never have been. <laughs> so like I don't I don't mind like typically I don't mind stuff like that. Like hunting like the Sabathun eyes and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Like I don't I don't mind yeah. that, right? Because it's a set location, you know where to go, and you you'll do the thing. But yeah. when it's like random upon random like that with the sleeper yeah. nodes, oh, yeah. nah. Nah. True. No, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you want Don't more RNG that. in this game of RNG? Let me show you all this RNG that I just RNG'd. And then, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We heard you yeah. like RNG, so we put RNG in your RNG for more RNG. Yeah. <laughs> Slap the hood of that car. I put so much RNG in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. miss me with that, dude. Happy with that change. Very happy with that change. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a pretty that's good one. It. Um, but yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it from from the TWAB for the news this week. Unless uh, anything else is uh is around. Oh, that'll be that'll be September eighth, so the last day of yes. um last day of Solstice, mm-hmm. right? We'll get that patch. Right. Yeah. So yeah, get after those gear sets if you if you still want them or <laughs> or otherwise. <laughs> you still care. Yeah, I'll do it for something to do. But I wonder yeah. how they're they're going to fill the extra month then that we've been given. Like, yeah, uh, they already pushed back the Exodus like quest right. steps. Yeah, right for the Travelers Chosen. I think that starts on September eighth as well. Mm-hmm. We'll probably have a few more Iron Banners, and then we'll have <laughs> then we'll have like Festival of the Lost in October. Uh, yeah. That's how they bridge the gap. Yeah. yeah. It was the season, seasonal event. Right. Yeah. Check it. So, I, you know, I'm assuming we're, we're at the end of the news now. It's going to be time to move into audience questions real quick. I believe so. And I'd love to start that off with my own question for everybody here, starting with you, Pigeon. Uh, so what are you doing for that extra month <laughs> while we're oh, waiting for fun. Beyond Light? <laughs> uh, whew. Apart from the, the PvP thing, uh, try up my game in that. I think mainly a few wee god rolls to tick off in the list. I'm looking at you, uh, Fatebringer Road, um, what's it called? Hand Cannon. Garden Hand Cannon. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Ancient Gospel, yeah. I was trying yeah. to now. I'm, ch- I'm chasing for one with Rapid Hit Dragonfly. It's like a total pipe dream that I'm trying to fulfill before well i guess we've got that we're going to have that raid in year four but yeah. that's like a, a pipe dreamy thing i'd quite like to get a few more uh flawless games uh flawless tickets and trials i was playing trials the other night and i actually quite enjoyed playing meltdown I, I don't know if it's for everybody meltdown but i think it plays quite quite okay for trials mm-hmm. uh so definitely going to try and log more trials time because uh, I, I shied away from it for so many weeks there um, worst case scenario, I've got a few other games on the side that I'll maybe pick up, just give them a shot, get some variety in there. Like, I'm so wary of doing, like, burning out in Destiny. I love it to bits. I'm always going to come back to it. But I'm, like, very wary of, no, not today. We'll do something else, like, as far as gaming's going. 
Right on. How about you, Nim? What are you going to be playing? Uh, this upcoming week, uh, Avengers comes out like right the day before my birthday. So that's that's like a good birthday gift for me. Um, Quit I'll be hinting. playing that as Jeez as Louise. as long as I can, as long as it lets me. Uh, so probably going to be playing that. I in just whatever else is like in Destiny. Oh, in Warframe. Back on Warframe. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So how's that going? Yeah. Uh, let me let let me put it to, like this way. If okay. you guys think Destiny's grindy, I don't want to hear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Warframe just had a bunch of new content come out, didn't it? Yeah. I uh, think so. it did, but like. I am nowhere near like geared up to see any of that new <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're still like two or three years away, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> to catch up to my PS4 account? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know that feeling. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to dive into like some single player games that I haven't messed around with much. Uh, I'm going to do like the control expansions. I have I've yet to dive into them. Um even like that game was pretty f- flipping brilliant. Um uh Sekiro, a couple of others here and there, but I still need to finish Final Fantasy 7 the remake. Mm-hmm. Because I haven't finished Final Fantasy 7 the original. So that'll have that'll you, be fun. Have you played uh have you played Ghost of Tsushima, Dan? I have not played that yet. No, it's really good. Okay, it's so really, 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 really good. Like, I was really surprised by how incredible that game is. How do you think it would play on, on a stream? release? No, on a release PS4. Oh no! Would... That, so, it, I'm I'm based I'm rocking right now. Like I've been playing it on the Vanguard PS4. The one okay. that the, the the Destiny white one with like the, yeah. the symbol on it, which I'm assuming that's like cl- as close as I can get to like a base. Yeah. PS4. Um, it does chug in the beginning okay. because in the, the the first couple of hours of the game, even I was having a hard time kind of like enjoying it because frames were dropping and there was a lot happening. And uh, but once I kind of like started moving away from like a lot of the the high action sequences and cinematics and stuff like that it kind of stabilized okay and the game it's, it's just it's such a good game it's beautiful it's it's one of those open world games where like you don't really want to use fast travel because okay. the environment is honestly that incredible like that game has no right being that pretty honestly okay it was really, really good. I'll give that a shot. I saw, I also have DLC in Borderlands too that I haven't finished. So yeah, but that's Borderlands. yeah, that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> I was just thinking actually, I'm going to get right deep in Minecraft as well. Like yeah, got a call man. Never played it. So much to learn. Like that's really, amazing. dude. Until this like last week, and I didn't realize how deep that game goes. Like oh yeah. At, I was pure buzzing because I farmed like a chicken farm and then <laughs> <laughs> like everyone, one of the guys in the, the server uh, has like a, a basement that's just like a big armory forge self running machine. <laughs> Not, I'm like, bro, how do you do that? I flipping built like a, a four poster bed and was buzzing. <laughs> was a fucking... Right on, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Minecraft is good stuff. <laughs> um, As for me, uh, I'm going to be spending my time playing through the final bit of uh, the final title update for monster hunter world which is going to be dropping i think sometime in october they're going they're finally at the end of that game's lifespan which hopefully means we're going to be getting a sequel to world sometime very soon so they're dropping uh their final bit of free content very excited That's for it. crazy dude yeah. like that game put out so much worthwhile free shit yep like it is it's, honestly un 
it, it's kind of unreal. Like all of the free yeah. content that, that Capcom put out for that game has been insane. And it's it's actually been so much free content, you know, mixed in with the one bit of paid content with Iceborne that mm-hmm. I forgot that this game came out two years ago. It feels like it came out three or four years ago because I've been playing it for so long. But no, it was 2018 when Monster Hunter World dropped. And now we're at the uh, the final title update, which is going to bring uh, a classic of the Monster Hunter franchise. The final boss, as it were, Big Daddy Fatalis. And I cannot wait. Cannot wait to go dragging you through that fight, man. It's going to be good stuff. Uh, I'm going to die. <laughs> yes. Bro, I have... Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I might regret this saying this because I see your, uh, our buddy uh, Black Fox in chat there. I, I, I have yet to be furious rajang oh i never beat him dragged kicking and screaming into content bro rajang clapped my cheeks and i was like all right bro you win (laughs) he bullied he bullied me out of the game (laughs) that's all right we got you we got you oh man all right well is it time to move on to some of the audience questions yes it is yeah man I have quite a few. Go. I have a, quite a few here. Oh. Uh, we're going to ask some of our guest Pigeon first, and then we'll open it up to the general uh, uh, panel. So, uh, Pigeon, it is asked by Butt Coffee, what is your level of excitement for a stasis weapon, and do you think you'll want a heavy or energy one first? Ooh. I'm pretty buzzed about it, by the way. Um, I think a lot of people forget that even with the subclasses, it's... A- new element in the game and that includes the weapons yeah and um, so i reckon an energy weapon to start off with something to tease it out and uh, something like a shotgun would be cool and mm-hmm. my playlist involves shotguns quite a lot so getting to grips with a stasis shotgun would, would be really cool i hope there's i actually hope there's like unique stasis perks like on the guns as well that um make like play with the sandbox stuff like it maybe has like a a diet sort of mute me, uh, ice mechanic say for on the weapons yeah. i think that'd be pretty cool like this shotgun freezes targets on a threat or something or you know just speculating again but something unique to the stasis guns for sure and yeah an energy weapon and that being a shotgun would be really cool just to start off with yeah um yeah, that sounds neat. Uh, the, the, the stranger's the stranger's rifle has got to be stasis, right? Right. If it's gonna, if it's not a kinetic weapon, then yeah, that's got to be the first stasis weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pastel Bat ninety asks, does Pigeon think the curated gnawing hunger is overrated? Is that why he deleted it? <laughs> that's such a <laughs> trolly question. I actually uh, did a did a charity block a few weeks ago um, mm-hmm. for a project called the Trevor Project, mm-hmm. and uh, one of my stretch things was to start deleting God rolls. So I deleted my curated non hunger at the time, which I'd farmed for the year four version. Yeah, it's a pure beast of a gun. Uh, I wouldn't say it's overrated. I'd say it's on point for what it does, um, and it's definitely worth grinding for. I deleted it for charity. Turns that part as well. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt a little bit, but it's yeah. nothing. It's nothing. Just, a, just a little bit for charity. <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah. Um, man, Butt Coffee has comes at us with a lot of questions here. Uh, do you guys? Uh, can you guys speculate on why there are Vex on Europa? I think there's a teeny tiny possibility of a link to Venus. I mean, why not? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't want to sound cheeky, but I, when I, I seen that question in chat, and I was literally just going to reply because video games. It's like, <laughs> yeah. like without sound cheeky. I appreciate but coffee. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think they could they can do whatever they, they want and put enemies here, there, everywhere. Right. Yeah, agreed. Vex, especially who can just teleport across timelines casually. Like there's some Vex there. I'm not going to question yeah. it. I would simply say they're there because the darkness is there. That's why. Oh, what if there's some weird link between Vex and Exos? Oh, shit. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we got the Deep Vex Stone Crypt goes... coming. Yeah. Oh, so, so excited. Maybe, 
Uh, Vexos? <laughs> so- sounds like a cereal I, I want. Sounds like a cereal is, I want. This is canon. This yeah. is canon now. Oh, pigeons, Vexos. Uh, also, <laughs> he also asked, given the universally known st- stain that Activision had on D2, how confident are you that Bungie will go back to some D1 aspects of character and weapon progression and fully lean into MMO style? Oh, it's it's so risky. The yeah. I think when you ask a question like that, you're asking what player base do they want to cater to, and yeah. mm-hmm. you've obviously got your the hardcore gamers who will grind the hell out of the game uh, and make their characters the best they can be, and then you have the casual player base who play the game because it's fun at, at its core level. Um, I, I think if they make a huge skill gap. The, the bigger the skill gap, the better. So mm-hmm. it's going to have yeah. to come down to that. Like, you could, we could all play the game. We could have the exact same stats, roles, everything. But if you know how to use it better and you've got like a knowledge of how to use it better, then that's that's what sets people apart in the game and the experience. In my opinion, in my opinion. No, I, I I'd say that's uh, that's probably on point. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Mm. with Gray Fox asks king of questions with the reveals of stasis gameplay and maybe a view of the new location would you have would you be happy with no reveals of the story and keep it all a surprise or will Bungie spill some of the beans oh please keep it a surprise you know they're gonna say <laughs> something though <laughs> yeah there's gotta I... be there's gotta be a Cade 6 death moment that they're chomping at oh, the bit so. to reveal down the line, like they're going to they're going to Beyond Light is exciting, the Phantom Stranger returning or not the Phantom Stranger? Oh my God, the Stranger <laughs> returning, the Exo that's, Stranger that's, returning. No, that's all right. I like comic books too, Dan. Oh my God, <laughs> the Exo Strange Stranger returning is an ex- is an exciting thing. It's the first time she's been back since uh, Destiny One, so. They've got it. I think they have to like just press the gas a little bit on that one, like yeah. on some story aspect to keep yeah. momentum going into November. Because right now we have, as a community, I'm excited for Beyond Light. I'm not as excited about it as I was when it was announced, but only because yeah. <laughs> like there's there's a significant amount of time in between, right? It's not yeah, it's, yeah. and it's not Bungie's fault. It's 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 my fault for expectation and uh, the thought that it would be out sooner. But they, with everything kind of being pushed back, I would assume that they're like, okay, this little tiny reveal that we wanted to do in, say, the end of August, right before September, we're just going to push that back to the end of September or early October and see where that lies. Yeah. 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 Someone, I'm pretty sure they said that Bungie's probably making a big loss on pushing the mm-hmm. game back. Like, less pre-orders and more development time. It's, it's a big trade-off, a big risk. Not mm-hmm. to mention the amount of games that that release now drops right in the middle of. So, it's going to be tricky, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Let's see here. The Destiny Show, uh, what are some lessons you think Bungie should take away from this year's seasonal cadence? How can seasons be improved in the future? Uh, and thank you for an awesome podcast. Thank you for an awesome podcast. Well, thank you, yeah. Yeah. Um, when it comes to these seasons, I think something Bungie's probably learned, not just from this season, but from the previous one, is that revolving your entire season around one specific activity isn't always the best way to go with uh the previous season revolving around trials was not enough to keep people interested in the game that got a bit better with this because the the focus of this season is on the story elements that we're getting every single week and the prismatic recaster i think that was probably one of the saving graces at least for pve content Mm -hmm. during this season it gave people a focused grind took a lot of the rng out of um out of going for the gear that you want and that's something i absolutely hope bungie continues 
in the future. Oh, I don't yeah. want them to throw that system away when Beyond Light comes out and go back to saying, okay, we have a loot pool of 375 items. Good <laughs> luck. Um, <laughs> hopefully they yeah. hopefully they keep that moving forward. Uh, so I like that. I, that. That's probably the big thing that I like about this season that I think they did really well, and I hope that they continue. Yeah. Well, uh, also, oh, go ahead. So sorry, yeah, the it's it's true. Like I said, doing what you said, sorry, doing activities that you want to do, yeah, um, get rewards, loot and stuff, and you can focus it, which is a great concept. Obviously, we're never going to get as good as Menagerie gave us back in the end of the year. Uh, yeah. Right, like that was just insane. How how you could grind out for that was that that was that year, year two, sorry, and um. Like going forward, definitely try and shake up the activities uh, so that you do keep coming back to them. There's something to chase and there's a pinnacle chase yeah. to get that grind on the go. Because like, as I said, I can't remember last time I sat in a strike playlist, you know, like they, they're there for people to do and they've got their own purpose. But for me, I've done them to the, like, done them to the death. So yeah. as long as those, um, as long as each season everything feels refreshed, then I think that will go hand in hand with what you're saying, Link. Like the the way the content goes in each season. It's like, yeah, we've got this new thing, but the old content, the old strikes and stuff, also have this now for you, and so on and so forth. The problem with strikes, though, is that they've been fundamentally bare since Destiny Two launched. You know, mm. like I, I, I could have gone and played you know strikes in d1 until i got the drop that i wanted from because you know they had the uh the strike specific loop yeah and like the the skeleton king stuff like that i still never to this day got my god roll dark blade spite but you know that's what kept me playing those you know that yeah. that, that playlist right. it was something it was something to get but right now it's like for those who are still using them, to, you know, strikes to get like a pinnacle drop or, or a powerful drop, like you play three and then that's it. Unless you're yeah. forced to do them for yeah. like, you know, something like uh, a quest or, or something like that. Typically stuff like that, it's not going to get touched. It's that play loop. Wait, what was the play loop? It was, you did strikes, you got the skeleton key, you took the skeleton key into the nightfall to get the... Yeah, it wasn't mm-hmm. that, that's, not even into that, a nightfall. You could have just used it at a regular strike. That was oh, that was the beauty of it. I couldn't remember, but that would, yeah, yeah, you're right. That just felt yeah, like that break. would. I would do that for hours and end if they had something at the end of it. You know. Yeah, that was that was the thing. You know, and every strike had something, and you know, and some of them even had multiples, like the sunless cell, uh, a la cool, had the titan helmet and a fusion rifle. Or the Scion Flayers strike had three different uh, Hunter Cloaks, one for each element. Like, that was sick. The modifiers were, were as Grey Fox mentions, were better, too. Like, mm, you know, yeah. there, was, there was a little bit more, more Less options punitive. to that there. Yeah, it, it's not like, oh, what, today's, it, what, heavyweight? All right, I'll play today. And if it's not, not. Like, right. you know, the, the fact that we're, we're missing small arms and um, special arms and stuff like that, like, that sucks. Because like there's so many like cool weapons in those respective slots that could be silly to use on a strike, but they're not. They're just it's it sucks to see so much wasted potential. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, final question of the evening goes to Black Box. This is aimed specifically at at Black Link. Uh, oh boy. Does spirit bloom smell like old spice? And if so, which old spice? spice? So first, yes, spirit bloom does smell like old spice. That's why when you are in the vault of glass, you always, always, always open the spirit bloom chest. It's like a little (laughs) midway checkpoint through the vault of glass to make sure that you smell your best once you finish sweating through the Templar encounter and go on to Atheon and, you know, you head into the glass throne, not smelling like a bucket of sweat. As for which Old Spice it smells like, I'm going to say Fiji with palm tree antiperspirant. Okay. You get... Spirit Bloom smells like Fiji with palm tree. Okay. Respect. Respect on now the Fiji. Know. 
Yeah. That's why you open that. Listen, I don't care what anybody says about any seventh chest. Ignore them. They just want yeah. you to stink when you get to the glass throne. Open that spirit bloom chest. Do it. <laughs> this is <laughs> so worrying because my roommate bought this cheap air uh, pretend space stuff. It's not old space. It's just space. And I was X spice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what like what you call eyes? Yeah. Then I got I got up that morning. And I was like, what? What have you? What is that? And he's like, space. I'm like, uh 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 uh. And now I'm going to look at him and go, that it blim. See, he didn't open the chest. He didn't open the chest. Always open yeah. the spirit bloom chest. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm just really glad that you can't smell video games. All right. <laughs> right, because smell of vision. I'm, I'm, I'm glad the smell of vision trend from the early 90s uh, did not last a year. <laughs> oh man, do you remember? Like, do you remember that when ABC did that? Like the 4D experience. What an awful idea. <laughs> Does anybody remember that? Am I just old? Oh my yeah, god. Hopefully that. I remember 4D was. Uh, I think it was like Honey I Shot in the Audience or something I was I watched. It was yeah, it was kind of like that. You got the 3D glasses to watch like TV for that entire week. <laughs> yeah. It was like only like four or five shows or something like that and they were all they were all like the <laughs> the getcha gimmicks like it was like right. home improvement with like a chainsaw coming toward the screen or something. But then yeah, they also had yeah. little cards that you scratched off in order to smell the uh the experience it was bad it was bad Nim time, was guys. so insulted by uh our dragging of 90s culture dan that he had to leave yeah i know <laughs> and now the secret's out craig is in our space people now know that craig's here just lurking oh, in right, shadows. because he happen. showed up that's a bit of self-promotion <laughs> There we go. Well, I think that's enough tomfoolery for one night. Is that all the questions we got, Dan? I th yes, that's all. That's all of them. <laughs> well, right on. Thank you all so much for tuning in to episode 251 of the Planet Destiny podcast. This one has been a ton of fun and a very special thanks to our guest, Pigeon. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, man. It was great to have you here. Dude, no worries. Anytime. Uh, big up to Moon and Chat as well for getting us in, Dan for setting up as well, and yeah. then for being beautifully handsome. And dude, like, nice to meet you, dude. Hope, oh, it's great uh, to meet you, man. Again soon. Yeah, absolutely. It was fantastic to have you here. You were a great guest. Um, and before we get on out of here, we like to allow our guests the chance to uh, tell everybody where they can be found across the internet and any other things you want to put out there. So go ahead and oh, take yeah, the sure. floor, my friend. Oh, like I, I sort of low key plugged myself at the start. Sorry, as I was <laughs> introducing myself. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> didn't know it was coming at the end. <laughs> if everyone <laughs> wants to check out my uh, my Twitch channel, that'd be amazing. It's twitch.tv forward slash pigeon, P I G I triple N. Uh, if you want to hear my ramblings, you can follow me on Twitter. It's P I G I triple N underscore because that damn account has got the pigeon without the <laughs> underscore. I'm coming for it. <laughs> <laughs> I know the pain. I know the pain. He knows that pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on. Thank you again for joining us tonight, man. It's been a ton of fun. Um, after that, I guess we'll go through our usual host here, starting with the one, the only, Mister Nim Plays. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right. <laughs> all right, Dan Finity. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm okay. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> games you can, yeah you can find him at danfinity uh on uh, on twitch and danfinity on twitter where the eyes are l's i think yes. i got that right because he's he too is being constantly irrevocably immeasurably styled on by a 15 year old girl who will never give him his username back no nope. it's never going to happen <laughs> never never um, make sure you forever, check that guy out. He will be Dan Flannelty. Yeah. Dan Flannelty. <laughs> the, the, only thing, the only thing that I can think to plug, uh, the Discord, we were able to uh, apply for Discord partnership this week Ooh. for for my community, the Bearded Legion. So very excited about that. Oh, right on, dude. Congratulations. Thanks. It's been a, it's been a lot of fun. So right on, right crazy. on. 
Oh, good. Congratulations on that, man. This, this, this dude's a big shot. It's Landing weird. partnerships. <laughs> we don't know it's that. Not yet. weird at all. You deserve it. We don't know that yet. <laughs> Just an application. I believe in you. I believe in you. <laughs> Thank you. Also, of course, Nim plays at Nim plays. You know, he's got a probably Everywhere. another another Twitter <laughs> Twitter montage coming up. Some more screenshots. <laughs> Late night thoughts. Uh... I, screenshots aren't coming until Festival of the Lost. Oh, until so you can get back in that haunted forest? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, I will be put. I hope y'all like Avengers, man. <laughs> <I can't see. laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of Avengers stuff going up on on my on my Twitter. So uh, I am yeah. very much looking forward to getting your thoughts on that game because your thoughts are going to determine whether or not I get it. No pressure. <laughs> I will let you know. Right on. I'm going to be watching. I will be watching. And of course, my name is The Black Link. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at The Black Link. Um, still renovating and fixing the office, so obviously <laughs> that has impacted the, the live streams and all that kind of stuff. That's why I don't have a camera right now. I don't even know where my, I don't even know where my camera is. I kind of had to grab my desk and the bare minimum for my computer, run to an adjacent room and set everything up there. <laughs> um, as soon as I can get all that fixed, yeah. As soon as I can get all that fixed, we'll be back to the usual content creation and live streams and all of that kind of stuff. But all right, everybody, that is it for episode 251 of the Planet Destiny podcast, your guide to this week in destiny. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening or tuning in. We'll catch you all next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>